afternoon, everybody. My name is Pastor Joseph, uh, pastor of the Lighthouse Ministries in Los Angeles. Um, the email address, if you desire to reach me uh, directly, is pastorjoseph.tlhm for the Lighthouse Ministries at gmail.com. I'm hoping that you've had a wonderful week, wonderful day and been a blessing to someone else this week as the Lord has blessed us up to this point this week. Uh, we just finished a two-month uh, series that the Lord gave us with regards to being a Christian caregiver under the eternal caregiver, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we're going to embark on a new topic uh, which is uh, being thankful. And we're going to be coming off uh, the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, through chapter 2, verse 10. And it's centered on the story, the account of Hannah. Um, before we embark on that, um, I'd like to also uh, notate that today is part one where we're going to be speaking on a topic called an empty life. And if it be the Lord's uh, uh, will, next week we should embark on part two, which is a thankful heart. But this week will be an empty life. Um, I'd like to first uh, ask everyone viewing keep uh, little Hannah in Texas. Uh, she's been admitted to the ICU, uh, serious situations, but uh, he's delivered her many times and a little 10 year old only asked for one thing before she went to the ICU again, and that is her computer to be able to tap into this segment. So I wish her well, say hello, say I love her. And so does the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and to little grandbaby Talia Hannah, I'd love to say hello to her, a little five year old uh, evangelist. Um, hope she's tuning in, which I'm pretty sure she is. Um, I'd like to say hello to Dr. Solomon from Sentinel Hospital, Inglewood. Uh, my poppy pops in the ministry. Archbishop J. General, J. Alonzo Johnson, St. City Baptist Church. I'd like to thank Dr. Thomas, above all, really, uh, under the Father, Son, and Spirit for letting me be on these grounds that we may have this fellowship in Christ Jesus. And a uh, special shout out, I met a young gentleman uh, and I really enjoyed that. We we're from different parts of the country. I was in another part of the country this week his name was Scott down in Texas. Uh, we had a good conversation in the Lord. And just like to shout out to him. Hope he tuned in to listen along with his family and friends. So with that, let's uh, embark in a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Almighty Father, for being a Father, a God, all in all in total portion throughout these trying times and having us here in a fellowship uh, under your mighty holiness. And we pray that on this day, you may richly bless us, increase us, endow and empower us um, in our mind, heart, body, soul, and spirit, in this word, in this journey that we start, uh, and lift us up uh, from where we're at onto higher grounds uh, with regards to being thankful to you, O oh Lord. This uh, we pray in the name of Jesus and say amen. Amen. Um, uh, the story of Hannah is one that is really dear and near and dear to me in my heart. And um, I'm really enamored with her story. And um, there's three parts to this segment today. Uh, it speaks of Hannah's life that was empty, Hannah's empty life, Hannah's suffering, and Hannah's 
response or acknowledgement. Um, so we're going to touch first on Hannah's uh, life, which was empty. Um, we see in verse 1, I'm going to read the first two verses. It says, Now there was a certain man of Ramatham Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerohim, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephrodite. And he had two wives. Now, one thing I'd like to stop and point is that God put boundaries around polygamy, but in historical cultures, that's something that in pagan lands has always been. Um, just to touch base, because some people will look at that and say, hey, that uh, validates having more than one wife. No, it does not. Um, and he had two wives, and the name of one was Hannah. Uh, Hannah, if you research it, means favor or God's grace. And the other name of the other was Penina, uh, ruby or stone, um, which to me really matches her, because although she may have been in her life looking like she was glowing, uh, she really was a, a, a piece of work. Um, and to me, she had a heart of stone when it came to love uh, in the way that the Lord uh, outlined it. But the name of the other was Penina. And it says, Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. I'm going to stop right there. In Exodus 34, 7, it speaks of uh, God we know is loving, he's caring. He's not a teddy bear. He's not somebody that just you squeeze, he loves, he gives you hugs. He's also a, a judge, and it's firmly imprinted and implanted in his holy work. He is also a judge. He will not overlook sin. He will punish sin. It also said in Genesis that, I mean, in uh, Exodus, in the scripture, that he will uh, visit uh, one's sins down through the generations. So we have to be careful that sometimes when we sin, we might not be the one to reap it. It might be someone in the current or down in the genealogy uh, uh, down the road in our family. Um, but there was nothing mentioned in these passages with regards to anything that was occurring uh, in Hannah's lineage uh, that made her be the one to reap someone else's sins in her past genealogy. And we know that in uh, John 9, the disciples came to Jesus and said, who sins made this man born blind? And Jesus said, it was, that's not what this is about. This is about glory for God. Um, so there was nothing mentioned in the scripture. Um, there was also nothing mentioned about Hannah or any sins in her life, sin or sins in her life that uh, were a hang up to her not having children. And as a Israelite woman, that was uh, you know, other than a relationship of and uh, with the Lord and worship and praise um, and, and lifestyle, uh, as a woman, uh, being a mother, especially of a male child, was like uh, at the top of the list. Uh, and to not have any children, uh, uh, you would look down in ways that were not what I would say joyous days and moments and seasons in one's life as a woman in Israel. Um, and it says she was empty, okay? Um, in this area of her life, she was completely empty. And this was the, uh, like I said, under the, uh, other than the relationship with God, this was uh, the cream of the crop of her life uh, as a woman, you know what I'm saying, to bear a child and a male child. And you'll see why in a minute. Uh, there was also nothing mentioned medically, you know, uh, or physical, or anything with regards to physical condition or conditions on Hannah's part preventing her from having children. So uh, we see those three points, and we note that. But uh, we do know that this was, as we'll see down in a moment, it was something that was divinely inspired by the Lord himself. The Lord himself made the decision to have Hannah up to this point, not being able to have no children. Um, in Job 1-7, we see that the Lord divinely uh, uh, 
opened the gateway for Satan, uh, for Job to experience all that he did, you know, um, and he went through some tragic moments, as we'll touch on in a minute, under Hannah's sufferings. Um, so the Lord, uh, we know, is in control of everything at every moment. There's not a second or a nanosecond that the Lord is not under control of each and every uh, uh, individual on earth, saved and unsaved, and uh, their life being laid out. Okay, we see in Jeremiah how he told Jeremiah before you were even, I even placed you and formed you in your mama's womb. Uh, I already knew you. I, I set your your days in your life and I set who you would become and what you would be uh, about down here on this earth. Um, but for some reason, uh, Hannah, uh, you know, names mean things in the Bible, you know. God's grace, God's favor, uh, you know, which is his love, you know, uh, upon this name. And there was nothing mentioned about Hannah uh, through these passages uh, on a negative note, as we'll see also. So, uh, Penina, we see, is the other wife, and she had children, multiple, okay? Um, so, Hannah's life up to this point was empty. I'm going to stop there and ask um, anyone viewing or anyone that we know, uh, individuals that are viewing, if we know someone, um, how do you handle empty moments in your life? You know, um, there are many segments in society just in this country alone that we see where people are struggling. Like I mentioned to the gentleman, Scott in Texas, you know, with regards to what's going on with the government and all these prideful wars going back and forth people are hurting people are suffering and what the world needs not just this country what the world needs in response to their struggles is Jesus Christ um, he is the one that can fill to an overflow uh, the emptiness in our life he did say He's the fountain of living waters, and he who drinks of it will never thirst. And we'll have a continuous flow of living water within us to bless others uh, throughout our lifetime here. Should we desire to be what we just embarked on uh, the last two months, a Christian caregiver or a disciple, one who follows Jesus to serve Jesus. Um, so how do we handle an empty moment in our life you know uh, if you're having a struggle in a relationship right now of any sort um, and you're just not getting back what you feel you deserve in the relationship and it has left you empty um, you've poured your all and you're not receiving what your due uh, return is do you bail uh, do you become lonely? Do you become sad? Uh, do you feel sorrow? Do you feel grief, hurt, pain, suffering? What What is it that is going on within you when you're have, having this empty moment in your life right now? Uh, we know the biggest empty moment in our life is not having Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Um, but there are earthly emptiness that we can experience um, many people are without income okay um, and they have a huge empty spot in their life and many who had uh, employment what they seek now age and stage and experience life they cannot find um, doors are not being opened uh, many people are desiring a relationship and those doors that door is not open um, many people have mental challenges and emotional challenges going on in their lives right now and that has equal that equation has equal to emptiness um, some people's emptiness leads them to feeling uh, like they don't matter they don't count they're meaningless unfortunately some people uh, have taken their lives because the emptiness 
of life weighed so much upon them, it overwhelmed them. We have to be careful with the uh, tactics of this world. And it's not so much Satan, it's just this world system. It can absolutely overshadow us and put us in a state of darkness where that emptiness just illuminates and grows so large, it overwhelms us, it becomes unsurmountable. And if we don't have a support system around us, we can find ourselves uh, dying in that valley, in that season. Um, and Hannah was experiencing a serious and very heavy uh, struggle, a very empty uh, spot in her life. Um, the next thing that we'll touch on is Hannah's suffering. Um, we'll read down uh, starting from verse uh, 3. Uh, it says, And when the time was that Elkanah offered, uh, this is the offerings and sacrifices that we that they had to present up unto uh, the Lord at that time in Shiloh Tabernacle. Um, it says, He gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters. So Penina was kind of like a rabbit. Uh, she was popping kids yearly, okay? She had, uh, to all her sons, she had multiple sons and multiple daughters. Um, but unto Hannah, verse 5, he gave a worthy or a, what they look to say, double portion, for he loved Hannah. And here we go, answering her empty uh, nest at this in at this emptiness that she had in her life right now it says but the lord has shut up her womb that answers uh puts the umbrella over the first part uh hannah's life was empty it was something that was divinely inspired by the lord god himself um that doesn't make him what a lot of people will try to attack the, the lord god and the Bible by saying, well, if he's so loving and he cares and he wants to, he wants me in heaven and he wants all these great things and he wants to bless me, well, why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? Um, uh, God has a purpose. That's how I'm going to sum it up. He has a purpose in everyone's life, saved or unsaved. And God's number one purpose, top of the line priority is to take us rebellious, disobedient, continuously evil and wicked on a daily basis individuals that he created. He didn't create that darkness in us uh, of sin. Okay. We got that from uh, Satan. Okay. Uh, through what he did, uh, through Adam. We got that through our daddy Adam, okay? Um, he didn't create sin in us. He didn't put sin out through us. He didn't inspire that we go out and sin the way we do in thought, speech, and deed, okay? Um, he didn't inspire that we hide all this evil in our heart, okay? As the Bible says, our heart is the most deceitfully wicked place in us, okay? That's not something God inspired, okay? But he has a purpose, okay? And one thing that I'd like to touch on that the Lord gave me is that God never changes. His love, which is his main part of his character, never changes. And sometimes it even increases in tough times. In times where our lives are empty, the Bible declares that God loves us even more, okay? And he's trying to pave the road to get us to come to him, okay, in our emptiness so that he can fill us with what he'd love to fill us with. And that's Jesus Christ. Um, he wants to take us from being uh, the type of individuals that wake up on a daily basis in this cesspool of sin and swimming and, and, and journeying through it on a daily basis 
and growing in it and that becoming a part of us to a reprobate state. He's trying to get us out. Okay, he's trying to do what Jesus did with Peter and the disciples, launch uh, his beautiful grace out upon in the midst of our life as we're drowning in the sea of sin. And he's trying to reel us back in. Okay, and all he's trying to put in, in the midst of our life is that he's there. He's he's more than able if we are willing to grab that life raft called Jesus Christ by faith. And believe that God will reel us in and put us on the seashore of a new season in our life, filled and not empty. Um, and even if we have nothing to offer, okay, uh, we come empty. We have nothing to offer Jesus Christ. We have nothing to offer God the Father. We have nothing to offer God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. We come empty. We come as sinners. Our sins are not something that is a prize package walking into heaven. No, it must be dealt with, okay? And we must be reconciled, okay, as sinners through Christ Jesus, okay, to become blessed with his grace of salvation, declared as a child of God the Father in Christ by the power of God the Holy Spirit, and to be declared not a sinner, but a saint, a saint that will struggle with sin, not a sinner who loves sin, okay? We're a saint that struggles to sin less, not a sinner that uh, that desires to sin more, okay? And that's something that I, I'd like to just stop and just say thank you, Lord, because had it been a conditional package based on, all right, I'll save you as long as you don't sin no more nobody on earth would be saved. Just like that rich young ruler that came out in the midst of uh, throngs of people before Jesus and said he kept the law. Uh, you kept the law. You're you trying to say you ain't sent nowhere. And, and last I checked, the one that he was talking to was the only one that fulfilled the law, which was Jesus Christ, who openly declared that he came to fulfill it, and he did fulfill it, okay? He even gave the people the, the rebellious... The, 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 the rebellious hellhounds, okay, I believe it was John 12, a chance to step up and say, well, which one of you can convict me of sin? Nobody stepped out. The Pharisees were there. The scribes were there. They were the top of the line uh, with regards to the law and the knowledge of it and, and being able to figure out somewhere where he, he, but they didn't. Even when he healed on the Sabbath, they didn't even point that out because he put down something upon them. Hey, won't you guys go out and do a little teeny top thing, you know, uh, on a Sabbath day? Go save your animal, okay? That's work, okay? They were so meticulous to point out little things about other people, they couldn't find nothing on Jesus, okay? So, uh, we see that God loves us even in our worst condition. And all he's trying to do is take us from our worst in sin to his best in Christ Jesus. And we don't have anything to put on the table. There's nothing that we are putting on the table to say, here, God, this is why I should be uh, saved. Uh, let's skip all the preliminaries. Uh, you know, all right, just declare me. All right, I'm gone. Talk to you later. No. What can we put on? The, what do we come with? Who, who in the Bible came to Jesus where Jesus said, uh, you know, you're good? No, we got to deal with the sin factor. You, you would hear Jesus utter somewhere throughout the Gospels, your sins are forgiven. Okay? We got to deal with the sin. Okay? But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus that that's our, that road has already been paved. All we have to do is step into his presence. I'll let you come in. This is my rap sheet of sin before you. I know I did it, okay? I'm not blaming nobody else. I'm owning this, okay? We need to stop putting our issues, okay, our decisions, uh, that what we reaping, we need to put all, stop putting all our issues on this person, that person, this situation, that situation. Own it. We sow it, we reap it. Own it. 
God loves us so much, he's not looking to sit us down and have us write a composition of 10 pages for each sin. We'd be in eternity writing. We never finish writing, okay? He's just simply looking for someone to say, I believe by faith. I believe your word by faith, okay? And I'm turning over a new page right now. I'm, I'm coming to you empty, okay? And I want to be filled with your love. I want to be filled with what's in your love, that I can be pardoned, I can be forgiven of all my sins because Jesus' death on the cross ended my uh, uh, rap sheet before you. You, you, put that, you put that to rest permanently. And when he rose on the third day, uh, you gave me part two. You gave me a hope, okay? You know that I'm going to sin after I get saved. You know I'm going to run into issues after I get saved, but nothing will change that because nothing can separate me from your love in Christ up above or down below. And I, and I want that, Lord. I, I want it desperately. It's the top of my priority. We come like that and we open ourselves up so he can embrace us and we embrace him and don't let go. He's your life raft, okay? You don't let go of that, okay? Um, the Bible says, calling upon him in that manner, uh, one is saved. Um, now, in uh, verse 6, uh, it speaks of Hannah's sufferings, which is threefold that the Lord gave me. And it says her adversary or enemy or opponent, okay, also provoked her sore. For to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Um, I'm going to go to verse 8 also. And then said Elkanah, her husband, to her Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? Why and why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better than ten sons? Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes men, sometimes men talk too much, and sometimes men don't quite. Uh, they 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 get so caught up in self, so caught up in other factors, and we're talking. I'm talking even husbands. Or, or loved ones, you know, we, we tend to lose track sometimes of our loved one, our wife, our significant other, and her challenges because we don't make time, quality time, fellowship time uh, in the Word in Christ uh, with that other individual, that significant other or that wife. Um, he knew what the situation was. Um, but going back to verse 6, uh, Hannah's sufferings were at the hand of Penina, and it was not the Holy Spirit working in and through this woman, uh, interacting in that manner as an adversary against Hannah, because they knew that the heart of the law was to love the law was to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then in Leviticus, there was another part, love your neighbor. I mean, it was to love, okay? And, you know, one thing about polygamy it, it, throughout the Bible, when it surfaced, it was nothing good coming out. It was always problems that stood out. Um, we have to be in right relationships here and with God. And when we're in right relationships in Christ, okay, um, great things happen. That does not mean that we won't have challenges. We won't have hard and rough and stormy times, okay? But forgiveness is one of the ingredients in love, okay? We will understand, we will have compassion, we will have mercy, and we will forgive, okay? And forgiving is like Jesus taught Peter. It's continuous. It doesn't stop. Okay, the husband's doing the same thing over and over again, forgive. The wife is doing the same thing over and over again, forgive. Don't bring it up five, six, seven years down the road. Don't go tit for tat. Don't bang at each other's. 
love each other because that's what God does, saved or unsaved, every day to us. He loves us, okay? I don't care what crime, how much time. I don't care if you don't have a dime, if you stole somebody else's dime. God loves you. I don't care if you are hardcore atheist. I don't care if you're a hardcore radical uh, Muslim. I don't, I, I don't care if uh, you're agnostic, if you uh, a scientist. If uh, How you stand on this earth where this is not something you vibe and jive to or want to come or even believe in. I don't care if you're one that uh, blasphemes. The Lord God true and only living God, okay, loves you, loves me, loves us, loves the world. For God so loved the world. Stop right there. He gave, okay? He didn't ask us to come with something to give him, okay, uh, to appease him, to gain salvation. He gave us uh, uh, the doorway. Jesus is the door. He is the way. Okay. He paved the way for us simply by faith to be at peace with him and to learn of his peace so that we can walk in peace and shine that in others who are in the emptiness of their life. They have no peace. They have no joy. Can be drawn to that. Um, so we see that Penina was this instrument of evil being used by the one of this world, okay? We see in Job 1, chapter 1, verses 13 through 19, how Job, uh, in, in, a, in, in a quick moment when uh, God said, just don't lay hands on him. You can torment the rest of his life, you can mess with the rest of his life, but don't lay hands on him. Immediately, Job lost, the first they talked about ox, donkeys, then sheep, then camels, then his children. Uh, his uh, emptiness in life uh, hit the pinnacle, his children. But Job said something uh, emphatic. He, he came in with nothing, and he's going to leave with nothing, okay? But blessed be the Lord God, okay? Can you bless the Lord when your life is empty? Can you even turn and look to the Lord? Okay. Is there a drip drop of praise? Is there a drip drop of any thankfulness in you when your life is empty as Hannah's was? Okay. Um, are you willing to even put be put in a mindset of giving? Are you being are you even willing to focus on that segment? Okay. Time is now. You, you know, the Lord gives you an open door, an open invitation. He even comes to you. He knocks at the door of your heart every day. He is whispering to you each and every day in your conscience at the door of your heart. Okay, let me in. Why do you want to keep suffering? Why do you want to keep living this life that you know you got more problems than blessings? Why do you want to keep living this life that no matter how much you chase, okay, the blessings that you want in your life is never enough. You're always hungering and thirsting for more. And the more you go out there, you are experiencing more empty spots in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. Okay. And, and, and at times you see nothing. You see no cup that's full in your life. There's, you know, there's nothing that you can report that's going good. You got more negative than positive. Why do you want to keep doing this? Why do you want to keep hurting yourself? And then when you hurt yourself, you hurt your kids. You hurt your husband or wife, a significant other. You hurt those around you, family, friends. You, you hurt the strangers that the Lord wants to use you to minister and bring, lift them up. But above all, you hurt God. He created you. Okay. And that through Jesus Christ, he could recreate you. We, we must be reborn, okay, uh, in the spirit so that he can elevate our life, our way of thinking, our way of, uh, uh, of moving and having our moving and being down here on earth and our lifestyle. 
in a manner that we would be a blessing to any and everyone, uh, a friend, stranger, family, or enemy in our life, okay? Why won't we let them in? Um, the family struggle uh, that Hannah took on. It shows that those closest to us, that's why when two people become one under the Lord, uh, uh, when they get married, okay, they can uh, bring each other the most joy, but they can also bring each other the most hurt. They can empty out or fill each other the most. And family tends to wound us the deepest, okay, resulting in the worst sufferings of our life the worst emptiness in our life a lot of the times comes from family or those closest to us such as a, a, a husband and wife um, or any type of male female relationship uh, we know that satan comes for three things to seek kill and destroy okay satan does not want us to have anything good in life from god that's why he quickly went and tried to wipe everything that God gave Job out of the way. He's showing us. He's seeking and he's just destroying. He didn't come and add to what Job had. Uh, that bring God glory. He's coming to destroy and wipe away everything we got. And if we let him, he'll wipe the one thing that means and matters most to God Almighty. Your soul. He will wipe that off the book of life, okay, where we should be on, okay, and when we get to the other end, we'll be transitioning over to hell, because we allowed Satan to wipe us off from where God wanted us to bless us, and where God wanted us to be, where he said he called us to be, okay, uh, with an open door. Um, families tend to harbor ill will, Jealousy, envy, grudge, vengeance, worse than any other individuals we have in our life, as we see here, okay? Penina's blessings, her children, were Hannah's grief, anguish, pain, and suffering. Every time a new one was born through Penina's womb, it just increased the emptiness, the heaviness in her heart and soul uh, year after year okay um rather than being of comfort and praying for hannah okay putting her arm around her and giving us some hope she gave her more grief anguish pain and suffering she used her kids as a weapon and you know we see that a lot today in divorce settlements we see that a lot today in these tip for tap relationships kids are paying the price and in black america most kids today through the last several decades, have been growing up without the male husband in Christ in that house. He goes out, earns a keep, comes back, he leads guys and direct his wife and his children, his flock, okay? A little shepherd under the king shepherd, Jesus Christ, okay, according to God's word and will. That's been missing for decades. And what's entered, okay, are the ravenous wolves, the wolves wrapped in sheep's clothing, okay? Kids are growing up today with the evil that's in the internet, okay? They, they think that these different chat lines and these different entertainment lines are cool. You know, it's fun, it's entertaining, there's it's funny things, there's things to laugh at, but the reality is the Bible says that the more you entertain that, you become a byproduct of that. Kids today in black America have a hard time reading, they have a hard time speaking, they have a hard time writing, you know, by the time they even hit teenage stage, it's hard for them to get a job because they can't pass a piss test, a, a, a drug test. They can't pass the literacy test they, or they can't pass a background test. Um, it starts at home. You know, parents today need to stop blaming everybody else and they need to look at themselves. OK, leadership by example, where that parent goes and how that parent lives that child is going to become a byproduct of that. And, and when parents become hell-bent on coming down on their kids because their kids are come, uh, they're starting to see little spot, spot moments of who they are, uh, they need to look in the mirror and say to myself, well, how did this child become like this? 
okay? We got to stop blaming everybody else because God is all powerful. His word is all powerful. It's forever settled in heaven. He has all power and authority in heaven. If we let him in our life and we walk with him daily, okay, to learn more and more about him and his ways and his and on the way of life, okay, our kids will reap the benefit. Train them up in the ways that need to go. When they get older, that is implanted in them. That will that harvest will come up at the due season, okay, at the appointed season, okay? We can turn this around, okay, but it starts at home. So the Lord is asking through me, what are you doing about the empty parts in your life right now? Besides complaining, besides getting angry, walking around with rage and hate, okay, snapping at everyone, um, not being in the mood to hear God's word, not willing to come in fellowship here uh, or in person at one of his houses, not willing to turn to him as an unsaved sinner or not willing to come and grow in him as a saint saved by uh, God's grace in Christ. Um, the door is open. Um, we need to stop using our kids as weapons. You know, I know some people right now whose kids have developed serious mental challenges, emotional challenges, because the parents were using them as uh, instruments of evil, you know, tit for tat wars. Um, there's no time or the hour, day of the week, place in the house, out on public, or even during time. Uh, well, let me let me back this up. Uh, rather than being rather than being of comfort to Hannah, Panana used the kids as weapon of evil to cause Hannah further hurt year after year okay there was no second min hour of the day or time of the year inside the house or outside the house where she did not provoke her she did not throw up her kids in her face she did not say you don't have what i have you are not uh, uh his true wife you're not okay okay his true wife i am look at the results of it maybe you're not putting it on or putting it down the way you should Maybe you don't have what it takes, okay? Um, you know, we have this line, we go to church. Well, when they went to their church, okay, it said that uh, in the house, out of the house, on the way, and in the Lord's presence with the Lord's, in the Lord's holy uh, sacred, sacred time and sacred grounds, she still continued to provoke her, okay? And imagine if you have someone 24-7, uh, is a thorn in every area of your life that's bringing misery after misery, okay, hurt after hurt, pain after pain, equaling to more suffering to the point that you just feel empty. Do you know someone like that? Have you become that? Are you doing that to someone else? Rather than trying to break bread and forgiveness, okay, as the Lord says, Okay, because he loves us, we're in this war, okay? And no one wins in this war. This war of jealousy and age and, and envy and, and, and being led by pride, rage, hate, anger, racism, whatever it is, uh, wounding other people and getting a thrill off it, that, that, that doesn't win you nothing in the end because you spent more time uh, under your daddy, the devil. Jesus told the people of Israel, why wouldn't they want to hear? Why are they not willing to take in this, this word of life, this moment, this opportunity, this open door and re receive what God had been talking about from way back in the beginning? OK, and he said it's because they are the children of their father, the devil. OK, the footsteps of your life will show who is the Lord over your heart. And it's from your heart where your life, our life comes from in thought, speech and deed. OK. So when people say, well, I go to church, uh, that don't get you in. Well, I read, that don't get you in. Uh, well, my daddy or my friend, they, they, they this title, or that title, that don't get you in. You know, uh, giving your life to Christ is step one. Possessing him after you confess, uh, him possessing you is part one. You need to serve, but you need to be prepared to serve. You know, like I said, many, many went. But they weren't sent because they weren't prepared. Okay. Um, 
So sometimes our sufferings can be at the hands of family. Sometimes it can be societal, okay? Hannah in verse 7 uh, showed that uh, she was known as a barren Israelite woman. To be a barren Israelite woman, uh, you became the gossip of the town, especially at the water wells. We see that in John 4. There was a woman that was leading the life that was not cool, okay? Uh, not a righteous life at all, okay? But Jesus met her at the well. Jesus is willing to meet you at your well right now and break bread with you, sit down, and, and, and offer you a, a chance, an opportunity, okay, to turn your life around. Are you tired of being sick and tired? But if you're looking for a way, are you trying to do it your way? Are you trying to do it the way the world says? Or are you trying to do illegal things to try to, to make things better? Are you trying to manipulate and be deceitful with other people and use and abuse them and mistreat them to get over? You know, are you lying and cheating and stealing to get over? It's not God. That's the devil. Okay. Um, your time is now. Um, right now. Okay. Um, she had a bad rap. You know, if you were an Israelite woman and you couldn't bear a child, it was a couple of things that you were missing out on. I mean, people would look at you like it had to have been some sin in your life. Something that you're not doing right and something that you're doing wrong is causing this in your life, okay? Or it could have been your parents. You became a, a real talk on sidebars, and they weren't good talk, okay? But like Panina showed, she had opportunity to, to pray, to break bread, to be of comfort to Hannah. To truly incorporate her as family. But see, polygamy, there's no family yet. Okay? That's problems. Okay? That's like a virus. Okay? Two becoming one that God ordains. That is marriage. Okay? Man and woman. Going back to Genesis. That, when God said, what I put together, let no man separate. Okay? Man and woman. Not man and man. Not woman and woman. Not transvestite with male. Transvestite with female. Transvestite with transvestite. No. Those are abominations. Those are viruses. Okay? That does not get you into heaven. Okay? You need to let God let go of all this. Because that is just basically emptiness. Okay? In the end, it's going to get you judged to go to hell. Okay? And if you claim that you gave your life to Christ and you're still leading these sinful, abominated lives, lifestyles, ch check yourself now before God checks you on the other end. That's all I'm going to say. But um, a woman, an Israelite woman, prided herself on becoming a mother of a male child because she wanted to put her ticket in the Messiah lottery. The Messiah was coming through a woman, okay? Uh Plain and simple, okay? And any woman that was blessed with a male child in her womb, she might have been the one, okay? Um, but not to be able to have that, uh, that was serious pain. Let alone not being able to have a child, but not being able to be seen as possibly in the light of God's glory as the one, that was, that was hurtful. But then the other part to it, they prided themselves on uh, genealogy. You know, the male moved the name forward, okay? And she didn't have that, okay? So, you know, her genealogy would just stop right there. She'd be no more. She'd just be vapor moving forward, okay? And that was hurtful, okay? Um, and then also, uh, beneficiary, you know, passing things forward was also important in their life, as well as having that male to take care of you down the road, okay? Uh, males have responsibilities, okay? But she didn't have access to any of that. And she was watching Penina, who was not leading the life that she should have before and with God, okay? Based on how she was treating her, okay? Um, being blessed. How do you react when somebody more evil, more atrociously evil is looking more blessed than you? How do you re how do you look at it? Uh, how do you respond to you to it? How do you uh, uh, dwell in the midst of that? Okay. Um, you know when you break up with someone, do you, do you pray to the Lord that 
Lord, take care of them, especially if you have children, or do you wish the worst? You know, do you try to lie and cheat and, and, and do what you can to step on them, to, to suck them dry as much as you can? What's in your heart? You know, um, Hannah suffered family internally and externally. She suffered societally. I mean, there's more to this. These are just tidbits. She suffered personally. And like we said, her womb was closed. She had not access to the uh, 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 Messiah lottery. The genealogy would stop. There's no beneficiary. There's no caregiver in the future for her looking down the road at her old age with God's grace. But Penina looked like she had the upper hand looking into the future with these matters. But the Lord has this. He's always, he always blesses us with his love in special ways in our greatest seasons of suffering. You know, there was a woman at Simon's house who, uh, by God's design, she was not supposed to be in Simon's house. According to the Pharisees like Simon, hey, you know what? You're going to contaminate us. You're going to defile us. Um, but uh, nonetheless, she made her way to the feet of Jesus. Okay? And she came empty she came hurt she came wounded her tears were crying out okay uh from the depths of her soul she looked for mercy she looked to be healed she looked to be forgiven she had nothing left she had an expensive alabaster box now she could have turned her fortunes around financially easily with that but it, she was looking at life in a different way at that moment. She was not looking at it the way we on earth look at success. You know, the glitz and the glamour, the wealth, the being able to roll and stroll, parlay, and all the things that we ascertain in life, clothing, jewelry, all this fake and fake vanity that, that, that's before us. She was no longer looking at life like that. And I'm going to tell you one thing. They said she was a sinful woman, but I'm going to tell you one thing. She must have been pretty smart at coming up financially because uh, she held about a year's worth of salary in that box. She had some serious cheddar in that box, okay, with regards to that oil that was within that box. But she used it to bless the Lord. You know, are you hurting right now so much you've hit rock bottom, okay, in that rock bottom, are you willing to bless the Lord? Are you willing to come to the Lord and put all your hurt, pain, and suffering before him and bless his name, okay? Give everything that you have, okay, to the Lord, okay, and say, I'm here. I throw myself before you. Help me. Save me. Change my life. Change my way of thinking change my fortunes not that i want to be materialistic change me and place me in a manner on this yo earth to be able to help other people that are hurting that their tears are coming from their soul okay the lord is willing to do that for you if you're at that point okay there was an adulterous woman who was used as a pawn here we go again uh trying to trap jesus okay if he said yes stoner they would get to rome and Caesar would kill uh, uh, Jesus because in the land that Rome conquered, no one could kill each other. No one had the right to execute another. Okay, that was for Rome. Okay, if he said don't stone her, then they would stone Jesus right there because they say he's breaking the law of Moses. Caught in adultery, you got to be stoned. Okay, this woman was but, but a pawn. Okay, here she is hurting. She she her business is her life is put out her her life of sin is put out before. The entire public, okay, and the spectacle, okay, she's used as a pawn. No one was showing any care. No one was showing any love for her. No one was putting her arm around her. No one, all these people could have prayed for her. All these people could have asked Jesus to help her, okay? But we have to be careful. Evil will drag you to a place where you think all is good and you think that uh, your life is rolling and perfect the way you want it. But man, it will leave you empty and when everybody left okay uh, and it was just her and jesus there she could have just walked away and said well, well i got away with it you know let me continue on what i'm doing with my life
but she stayed. Let's look at that. We talk about what Jesus had did, but that woman didn't move. She stayed. She was like this sinful woman. She was really in her heart crying for a way out, a change from the emptiness that she was experiencing. You know what? Sex can make you feel good. It can get you a high. It can drive you to the sky. Okay? He looked good. She looked good. Everything that's going on can be great. Okay? You can keep doing it over and over again. It can be uh, your girl's sister, your, your, your husband's brother. It can be this one or that one. It's just it's an addictive drug. You can't get enough of it. Okay? But in the end, you empty. Because that's not how God designed it. And this woman did not leave. Man, even the worst people on earth know about Jesus and what he can do. Okay? They just choose not to come. Okay, Romans 1 tells you they'll step into evil to the point and, and sin, sin of evil to the point that they become reprobated. They love, they hunger and thirst to do the evil that they do. Okay, no matter what sin it is, they try to get their PhD in that sin. Okay, but the reality is they know it's wrong and they know that that does not feed their soul. The only thing that can feed your soul is Jesus Christ. And his holy word and will. Nothing else can fill our, feed our soul and the spirit side of us. Okay? All the evil we do in sin feeds our flesh. Okay? And the flesh ain't going to heaven. Okay? It's your time right now to really seriously consider this. If your life has this empty spot, if you have folks tormenting you, if you're your own tormentor or if you're tormenting other people, okay, if you see the empty spot in your life, in your heart, and you are without Jesus or you got Jesus and you're not sure if you got him or you got Jesus and walked away from Jesus, it's your time right now to be like these two women and just simply come to Jesus. Open up the door of your heart and let him in. OK, it doesn't matter if you crying. It doesn't matter if you hurt and beyond hurt. It don't matter who's even watching. It doesn't matter who even knows. OK, this is between you and God Almighty. You want to be right with him so you can be blessed by him. OK, and you can look at life not the way you've been doing it that's led you to having this empty heaviness in your life that won't go away. OK, but that you can be more than a conqueror over all these things. He will show you how to have peace with your enemy. He will show you how to have peace in your hurt, in your pain, in your grief and sorrows. He will help you to have peace with your depression, with your anxieties, with all your mental, emotional, and physical struggles, your relational struggles, your financial struggles, your housing struggles, but above all, your struggles with him, not having him. He will show you how to increase. Are you willing to let go? And let God enter. Um, I'm going to stop right here right now. And pray that someone. Has heard this. And seriously considering. Because we're going to keep embarking on this. Next week with the Lord's will. Um, the empty life. Okay perhaps maybe the week after. Or maybe even next week. We can start journeying into a thankful heart. Um, but. My name is Pastor Joseph. From the Lighthouse. Uh, email address is pastorjoseph.tlhm at gmail.com. Feel free to contact me or if you have uh, decided to give yourself to Christ or you're not sure if you did, whatever concerns you have, I'm not Penina. I am uh, an image of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be there to pray for you, come to you, uh, break bread with you as the Lord breaks bread with me. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that someone heard your report and all they have to do is come. doesn't matter how much they hurt, how much they cry day or night, how lonely they feel, how low self-worth they have, how much low self-worth they have, how they, they may have a gun or a knife to themselves. They may have a rope ready to uh, end everything uh, or they look for it to end. Um, we pray. I pray, Father, that right now, uh, they open their door and let you in and that they can continue with this journey here next week and you father help them you bless them you lift them up and over all these empty parts in their empty parts in their life 
and you filled them with your love. Uh, a love that just keeps on giving. And this uh, is my prayer, my request. I love you. Um, feel free again to touch base. Um, I'm there for you as the Lord is there for me. Um, in Jesus' name, I pray this prayer and I say, Amen. God loves you. God is always with you. Saved or unsaved, open up to Him and let Him in. I'm Pastor Joseph. I'm done.